Welcome everybody, this is Nicholas Hoschmidt and I'm coming to you live from Isle of Man where right now the Fide Korn Swiss tournament is being held. It's a rest day today and I take the opportunity to record some game analysis. So I want to show you a few games and we'll begin in this one with my game from round number three where I played against American strong player Jeffrey Sion, who is rated 2708. He has been the, the world junior champion in 2017, I believe. And he is very, very strong. Maybe a few words about this Fide Kuan Swiss. This is the first time such a tournament is being held. And the idea is that the winner, or if the winner is Carlson or, or Kaurana, who are both participating, the winner will qualify for the candidates tournament next year and as some of you probably know the winner of the candidates tournament qualifies to play the world champion so this is a very important event for many p players or for a lot of people also their last chance to qualify for the candidates this makes this tournament very very strong so let's get to the game i played with white and i start out as usual with e4 Jeffrey replied with the Karokan. And this idea here with knight f6 has become quite popular. Actually, I think Carlsen played it a while ago to take with the e pawn. And then the important idea here is to expand immediately with h5, h4. This idea has been quite trendy recently, or well, for, for a few years already, I would say, maybe two years. And I had also prepared it for my game because. It was likely that Jeffrey would play it. Castle h4. So now I stop the further expansion of black. I play h3. And what makes this position tricky is that black often has ideas along this diagonal with a queen and bishop battery or also sacrifices on h3, as we will see later. So knight d7. Both sides keep developing, knight f8, rook 81. And this was the first square command. Black has a number of different setups to choose from. The most pl played move is bishop c7 here to immediately set up this battery. But black can also develop his bishop to e6 or, as Jeffrey did in the game, to d7, which keeps them more flexibility. The e-file stays open and also the square stays open for the knight. So I play rook fe1, that makes a lot of sense. And here Jeffrey played queen c8 and he's very clear about his intentions. He wants to sacrifice on h3. So if I play any random move, let's say c4, black takes on h3 and I'm already in a lot of trouble. The queen is coming in and this is what I was talking about. Now we see how this pawn is useful on h4 as well as it stops any defensive ideas. There's a mating threat and this looks very, very dangerous. Well, actually, there might not be a mating threat quite yet, but it looks incredibly dangerous for white. So I stopped that by going knight f4, protecting this pawn. On the other hand, the knight is a little bit clumsy on f4 because often it can be a target and it's a little bit in the way. By the way, if you're wondering, bishop f4 doesn't work. That's a typical tactic. Now we see why the bishop is better placed on d7 here. Black has this move, rook takes e2. Trading the defender of the bishop and then black has one material. So I played knight f4. And now Jeffrey played knight e6, which is probably a mistake. Queen c7 is better and this is the move I expected. Now I want to go knight h5. And now... There are some ideas here, like bishop h6, possibly bringing the queen in. White also has attacking ideas because black has opened himself up by marching the h-pawn forward. And here I was expecting queen a5, which hits the knight. And I was looking at this position for quite a while, considering d5 here, which looks cute. Black cannot take with the queen because of bishop h7, winning the queen. And pawn takes d5 would give me some time to initiate my, my attack. But rook e5 is a little bit annoying in this position. This is playable for white, but in terms of advantage, I don't think a good shot. So what I settled on 
if this was to happen in the game was queen e2 and to sacrifice this pawn and this is possible there are some ideas to lock out the queen with c5 get some attack going but in the end it should be around equal after queen b3 so in the game jeffrey played knight e6 and now i could have traded the knights actually and this would also give white some advantage because in general the structure is better for white i have a pawn majority here on the queen side whereas the black pawns on the king side they they cannot build a pass pawn in the end game so in general the structure is always a little bit better for white um, so this would have given me an advantage queen e2 or maybe give a check retreat to e4 something like that but knight h5 also looked quite promising to me because like i said i have some attacking ideas against the black king as well and here i went to a bathroom and when i returned it was like a shock my opponent pretty much had played knight g5 right away and this is a losing move in fact queen c7 was clearly the move i expected and now i want to play bishop f5 and one important question is whether white is able to play f4 when black goes knight g5 so here for example it's possible knight g5 f4 takes takes this was a line i calculated and here I only check queen g4 which is not promising much for white but bishop f2 is stronger knight takes king takes and this pawn on h4 will fall black has some some compensations some counterplay but it should be better for white this also is often the problem for for black in this position that his pawn on h4 might drop so it's a double edged position for sure black can also play differently like bishop uh, rook to e7 and here white is a bit better but really not that much happened in the end so after knight g5 the game becomes very sharp because knight g5 is again very clear with his intentions to take on h3 and i cannot take this knight because then my knight on h5 is just trapped but i had seen that i can play f4 and this means black has to sacrifice material he cannot go back this cannot be the solution knight e6 then i can play queen f2 pick up the pawn this is just losing so it was clear he's going to sacrifice on h3 now and he took with the knight which is the better option bishop takes h3 is no good f takes g5 bishop g4 and now knight takes g7 is very strong just destroying any defensive barriers in front of the king or king takes g7 or bishop takes d1 first it doesn't matter this this is already like made in 10 something like this this attack will just crush through in no time here so this doesn't work so knight takes h3 pawn takes bishop takes and this is the critical moment in the entire game and it's also a wonderful exercise wonderful training exercise i already posted on my facebook if you haven't seen it yet i would definitely recommend you stop the video here and i give you two moves the two moves that i consider queen f2 and queen h2 and i can tell you one move wins and the other move draws so set it up on the board or take as much time as you want the position is very difficult but it's a wonderful training opportunity and stop the video right now all right so as it goes i played the wrong move i thought that both moves lead to the same position but that's not true the winning move is queen h2 i play queen f2 so let's begin with queen h2 in both cases i thought my opponent has to go bishop g4 and then it leads to the same position when i take on h4 but i like queen f2 a little bit better because it looked more active but there is an important difference so let's begin with bishop g4 here i take on h4 bishop takes d1 i cannot take back because my bishop is hanging but i can start an attack myself knight takes f6 g takes queen h7 and this is the line i calculate it looks very promising but here also white has only one winning move again stop the video take it as an exercise and try to find that move not so easy still we found it in the post-mortem analysis 
I calculate f5, which makes sense to threaten checkmate, but black ex escapes here, queen e7, bishop f4, this will in the end lead to some perpetual. So this is not the way, but bishop f5 is very strong. Now queen c7 makes sense, but then d5 is an absolute killer. Black can just resign immediately. Bishop b6 check is a threat, and there's just nothing black can do here at all. So he would need to play rook e6, but now just bishop takes e6. And queen takes e6, this time f5 is the killer. Not d5, but f5, bishop h6 coming next, black can resign. So black needs to take with the pawn here, still f5. Bishop c2, best defense, but the attack is just too strong. King d8, pawn takes e6. Queen c7, black can avoid being checkmated, but he loses too much material. Exchange down, game over. So this was bishop g4. And the other move, well, queen g4 check we can refute pretty easily because of the king f2. Everything is protected. White is just a piece up. But there's this move, rook takes e3. Maybe you also considered that when you now were analyzing the position. Rook takes e3, queen g4 check, king f2, and queen takes d1 doesn't work. Bishop e2, defending the knight on h5, hitting the queen, picking up the bishop, next move, game over. But queen takes h5. This is an interesting idea, to take this one first and then threaten the rook on d1. And how can white win here? Once again, exercise for you. So if we move the rook, I don't know, let's say to e1 or anywhere, black will just move his bishop and black is much better here. Because my king is weak, black has two pawns for the exchange, this is no good. But again, I can go for the attack myself. Rook takes h3, queen takes d1 and rook takes h4. And suddenly rook h4, rook h8 is a very strong threat. Black, of course, can move the king. And now there's one last precise move here. Bishop e2 to protect the bishop. Bishop e2 hitting the queen and after the queen moves, there's rook h8. Pick up the rook. Black doesn't have enough counterplay. Black can resign. So as you can see, <laughs> queen h2 was winning in all variations. What's the difference after queen f2? Bishop g4 is the same thing. But now queen g4 check, king h2, and again rook takes e3. I cannot take with the queen because of checkmate. And I take with the rook. And here it dawned on me what I had missed. I missed that black can take on h5 first. I also thought here queen takes d1. Bishop e2 is good. But black can take on h5. And now I was getting a little bit scared because as we saw, the position where black just moves his bishop and why it is an exchange up is, is not good because my weak king. But then I thought this I found this line rook takes h3, which is very similar. And here I thought I'm winning. Because again this idea queen h8, queen a8. But it turns out that now it's actually a draw. Black has an only move to play. Again, let's do another exercise. Why not? Find the only move that black can play and also what white should play afterwards because white has to defend then as well. All right, so king f8 is very important. Not to give any check, but to play king f8 first. And here again, I was getting low on time and I was getting quite worried because it didn't look so good. Queen h8 check, king e7, and the point is if I take the rook on a8, black takes on f4. This is why black doesn't shouldn't give a check first, he takes on f4, he picks up the rook, and this position is probably a draw, but black is certainly the one trying here. So I found instead rook e3 check to give another check, king d7, and only now take on a8. Queen d2 check, rook e2 doesn't help black, so bishop takes f4, king g2. And, well, if black takes the rook, then I can just take on b7. So, queen g4 check. And here, king f1 or king f2 are both possible. I play king f1, if king f2, then queen h4 check, queen h2 check. Black also collects the rook. I take on b7, queen h4 
queen c7. And now I could trade queens or I could move my queen to b4, a8. It's pretty much all equal. The game goes on, but it should end in a draw eventually. So I play king f1. Now bishop takes, queen takes b7, king d8. And this is just a perpetual. If the queen comes in between, well, I think again trading would be fine, but queen d6 looks better. King e8 even loses after bishop e4. Queen h3 check, bishop g2. Wait, no, not bishop g2, king e2. And bishop takes c6 decides. So queen d7, queen f8 check, and well, king c7. I think here I can even play on. This is definitely not worse for white. So king d7, take on a7, last trick. I was thinking maybe Jeffrey wants to keep going with king e6, but this actually loses to d5. But okay, a player of his caliber doesn't miss such easy shots, and then we agreed on a draw. I cannot play on, he cannot play on, so what can we do? Because my king is too unsafe, there are too many threats, I cannot defend against it, and I have to agree to the repetition you know before the game i kind of expected this kind of game between us because both jeffrey and i we are very sharp tactical players and we love the tactical fight the complications and this is exactly what happened it was a complete mess i had the chance i spent almost half an hour on queen f2 but there were too many details and i missed one of them and then i could be also a little bit lucky that it ended in a draw eventually because it was move by move, move by move. And in the end, a very exciting game. I hope you enjoyed it. And there are more game analysis to come. So stay tuned. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.